The arbitration is now over. The tribunal has decided in favor of the claimant and awarded it damages of 60 million US dollars in addition to its legal costs and the amount expended by it towards the costs of the arbitration. Asianix is of course jubilant about the outcome, but to its dismay, Electroace now refuses to pay it. Unfortunately, parties do sometimes refuse to honor international arbitral awards that go against them. Article 28.9 of the SIAC Rules 2013 serves to ensure that parties comply with the decision of the tribunal voluntarily. Nevertheless, when awards are not complied with voluntarily, it becomes necessary to resort to enforcement of the award against the assets of the award debtor, with the assistance of national courts. The rules on enforcement will depend on the place where the award is to be enforced, which will in turn depend on the place where the award creditor considers that it has the best chance of successful enforcement against the award debtor's assets. One of the key factors in ensuring the enforceability of an award is the absence of any procedural errors in the arbitral process. SIAC's supervision of the conduct of the arbitration, its assistance in appointment of arbitrators, its step-by-step -step guidance on the interpretation of well-tested procedures, and finally, the meticulous scrutiny process combine to ensure that challenges to SIAC awards are unlikely to succeed. SIAC has a proven track record of arbitration awards that have been successfully enforced by the courts of Australia, Hong Kong SAR China, India, Indonesia, Vietnam, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America, as well as in many other New York Convention countries. Let's return to Asianix and see how they are going about seeking enforcement of their award. Council has advised them to consider filing for enforcement of the award in China and South Korea, where Electroace appears to have assets. Asianix has engaged local council in both those countries and now consults them as regards the modalities of the enforcement proceedings any possible issues that may arise, and the chances of their success. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me on such short notice. My pleasure. The good thing is that I'm still in Singapore. Half days later, I would have been back in Beijing. Well, sorry to trouble you to come over to the airport to meet with me. Oh, well, snatched meetings in airport lounges are uh, all part of the life of lawyers like us. Yeah, this is a nice, uh, nice place. Uh, you mentioned to me that uh, you recently won a very big SIC award. Congratulations. Excellent job. Six million US dollars? Plus all of our legal costs and our part of the arbitration costs. However, Getting Electro to pay may be an issue. Well, that's usually the case. Since Electro Ace is rumored they have a subsidiary in China and assets in South Korea, we are thinking of applying to both nations' courts for enforcement of the award against Electro there. So what do you think our chances are? Well, for China, it's certainly worth exploration. Uh, although I haven't got a chance to review the arbitration award you have, generally speaking, Singapore and China are both the signatories to the Convention on Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Award, i.e., as you know, New York Convention. Therefore, Chinese court will apply the convention to recognize and enforce an SIC award because it's qualified as a convention award, as we say. Is recognition of an award separate from enforcement of an award? They are separate, but integrated. I understand China made some reservations when ratifying the New York Convention. Will these affect us? Well, the answer is no. There were reciprocities and commercial reservations, but I don't think it's going to affect our case here. Have there been any instances of your country's courts refusing to recognize and enforce foreign awards, particularly at Singapore 
or an SIH award? Well, I would say that only if the Chinese court found procedural irregularities as circumstances provided for under the Article 5, Section 1 of New York Convention, such as uh, short of uh, notice or any decision made by the tribunal beyond the scope of its jurisdiction or even arbitration was not conducted in accordance with arbitration rules. Well, our arbitration proceedings are conducted strictly in line with both the arbitration agreement and the SIH rules, and the resulting award was meticulously scrutinized by the SIH secretariat. So there would be no procedural defects that would implicate Article 5.1. That would be great, you know, if there's no procedural issues, then there's only one other very limited grant. On that basis, the Chinese court may still refuse to enforce an arbitration award. But I don't think that would be the issue in this case. And that is? Public policy. Public policy? Yeah. Oh dear, I am particularly conscious that there are sensitive issues surrounding corruption in this case. Oh, that's true. Uh, but Chinese court should not review the merits of the case. Unlike your case, the merits of the case has been decided by SIC Arbitration Tribunal. And Chinese court generally is conscious to ensure that their interpretation of the public policy grounds is only being made on a very narrow basis. Is that likely? Uh, for your information, the China's Supreme People's Court has long established the centralized report and reviewing system to ensure that Chinese court will adopt a consistent position toward recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral award. Report and review? Uh, very briefly, uh, let me explain to you what it is. Um, if you have an arbitration award which want to be enforced in China, and if you approach the Intermediate People's Court, if the Intermediate People's Court agree to enforce the arbitral award, then there will be no issue. If the Intermediate People's Court refuse to recognize the arbitral award, then the decision will be referred to the Higher People's Court. And if the Higher People's Court review and believe that the arbitral award should not be enforced, then it is required to report the refusal to the Supreme People's Court. Only Supreme People's Court has a final say on whether not to uh, recognize and enforce in the foreign arbitral award. In practice, sometimes going through the whole system can be time consuming, but it's very rare for the Supreme People's Court to invoke public policy as a grant to refuse enforcing a foreign arbitral award. That's very comforting to know. Let's talk procedure. Where do we file our application? Well, assuming that uh, you have arbitration award against a Chinese company, then you're approaching the Intermediate People's Court at the place where the Chinese party is located. Within what kind of limitation period? Uh, you have two years after you received arbitral award. No problem there. We can barely wait. So assuming the court recognizes the award, what enforcement measures can it take? If the Chinese court decides to recognize and enforce a foreign award, it will issue a court order, or we call it Ming Shi Cai Ding Shu, and order the Chinese party to pay the amount of the award within a specified time period. And if the Chinese party fail to comply with the court order, then the Chinese court will freeze up the bank account, freeze up assets, or dispose of the assets in favor of the winning party. And do we need to pay to the court for enforcement? Oh, no worry. The losing party will pay the court fees after enforcement. Right. Anything else we need to consider? To enforce in a foreign arbitral award in China, any information we can provide regarding the assets of the losing party in China will be very helpful for the Chinese court. Please to start work on that and prepare to file the applications as well. You have been very helpful. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Kanpai. Kanpai. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, good luck. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me on such short notice. Not a problem. Thank you for rushing down to the airport to catch me on my layover. Oh, well, 
snatched meetings in airport lounges are all part of the life of lawyers like us. Indeed, and congratulations on the victory in your SIC arbitration. Plus all of our legal costs and our part of arbitration costs. However, getting Electro to pay may be an issue. Hmm, let's discuss that. Since Electro Ace is rumored to have a subsidiary in China and assets in South Korea, we are thinking of applying to both nations' courts for enforcement of the award against Electro there. So what do you think our chances are? Korea is well known for being an arbitration-friendly jurisdiction. It signed a New York Convention and its Arbitration Act adopted UNCITRA mother law, uh, ensuring the application of international standard and the enforcement of foreign words. Is recognition of an award separate from enforcement of an award? We will apply to a court both recognition and enforcement of a word. Once enforcement judgment is rendered, it will effectively recognize the award as well. Are there any similar grounds as elsewhere for a Korean court to refuse enforcement? There was one uh, case last year where Korean district court dismissed a petition for enforcement, but it was uh, subsequently overruled by the appellate court. Anyway, that case involved a specific performance issue. A remedy section of that award was uh, not specific enough. But as yours is a straightforward monetary award, I do not foresee any issue of refusal. Have there been any instances of your nation's courts refusing to recognize and enforce foreign awards, particularly a Singapore or an SIAC award? Under the Article 5.1 of the New York Convention, recognition and enforcement of award may be refused if the award suffers from some procedural deficiency, uh, such as invalidity of the arbitration agreement, improprieties in the selection or the composition of the award. And under the Article 5.2 of the New York Convention, court may refuse if the subject matter of the dispute is not capable of being settled by the arbitration under the laws of the country where the arbitration enforcement is pursued. Well, our arbitration proceedings were conducted strictly in line with both the arbitration agreement and the SIAC rules. And the resulting award was meticulously scrutinized by the SIAC secretariat. So there would be no procedural defects that would implicate Article 5.1. And that is? Public policy. Public policy? Recognition and enforcement of an award may be refused if such recognition and enforcement would be contrary to the public policy of the country. Oh dear, I am particularly conscious that there are sensitive issues surrounding corruption in this case. In my opinion, this uh, case does not uh, frame a face it presents any public policy issues. But of course, we'll be prepared to deal with it should the other side raise it as a ground for refusal. Fair enough. What about the previous unsuccessful challenge to electrodes arbitrator in our case? Uh, could that become grounds to refuse enforcement? It could become an issue as it was disputed and there was a concern about the family connection. Uh, we will have to look into this further. However, the courts will consider all reasonable criteria uh, recognized in international arbitration, including IBA guideline on conflict of interests. But don't forget that the SIAC Court of Arbitration, a fully competent body, considered and rejected the challenge and you did not object that uh, decision at that phase. True, we did not think it wise at that stage. But the respondent also challenged the jurisdiction of the tribunal on the grounds of corrupt practices in receiving the supply contract. But they lost the challenge and did not appeal to the Singapore courts. They cannot normally resurrect their challenge and use it again in the phase of enforcement. Although, 
if the tribunal did not have a proper jurisdiction, that would be a ground for refusing enforcement. No problem there. We can barely wait. What documents should we provide to the court for enforcement? We'll need to uh, provide to the court the uh, application for the enforcement, proof of the arbitration agreement, and a word uh, and uh, certified uh, translation thereof, and the corporate nationality certification, and the power of attorney. Don't worry, we'll take care of all these. Right, anything else we need to consider? Do we have a details of Electro's uh, assets or business dealings in Korea? I am aware that they have a corporate office in Busan, but I'm not sure of further details. We will do an asset search, and then we need to freeze them ASAP. Yes, please do start work on that, and prepare to file the applications as well. You have been very helpful. Thanks very much. Well, my pleasure indeed. Kanpai. Cheers. Cheers.